All right, so uh, today we're going to be converting this, like green little hills and stuff like that, like a base coat, but we're going to get rid of those. And we're going to shoot for this reference right here. So this is like a swamp, big trees. Um, if you look at everything in here, everything's like a bluish color. So right now we have green, um, which is not really part of the painting uh, color scheme. So most paintings have like one color. So you look at every painting like a either blue-ish or green-ish, but everything has an ish to it. So with this one, I'm gonna be doing, um, going over these green mountains and make it more blue. So the sky is like a blue-gray, and so we'll kind of like hit that up there with a little blue-gray, and I'm using uh, two bright brushes. Um, a small bright brush, which is uh, like a flat brush, not round, so it's like a flat little edge, nice edges to them, well, pretty much anyway. And we'll get these things covered with the atmospheric perspective, what have you. And then I'll be ready for my swamp trees. <clears throat> so with this, I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of the blue. I'll try to mix up the uh, atmospheric perspective. So right now I'm mixing up like a little bit of the black to make a gray, white, obviously blue, and some green. So to make a good green, really all you need is like yellow and black. It makes like a really nice earthy green. So I'll do that. So a little bit of an earthy green in there, a little more yellow. So for this color perspective, this palette, I'm going to use uh, that kind of a green, which is more like gray, but you'll see how that works out here in a second. Um, so right now, it's, yeah, it's all a little bit too yellow. So what I'm going to do is, uh, when you do mountains, use a bright brush like this. The edges need to be really concise, so you want to be nice, clean edge, add a little extra hoopties to it, and those are like little hoopties. The further away it is, the more of those kind of things you have. However, if it's um, closer, you're going to not have nearly as many of those things. Um, so right now I'm going to go in with a little bit of the blue in here. You'll be able to see some of the green coming through a little bit, but not too much. And I'm doing a base coat here. Well, really, it's a second coat because I had the yellow on top. And see this little peak right here? So this is, like, too much for being this close. So I'm going to, like, exaggerate that. I'll connect them a little bit more so they're not quite as exaggerated. And because it's further away, I want this pretty light. So I'm going to actually go in with a little more white. And the brush strokes when I'm doing this is going to be kind of like angles. So I'm not going to go systematic patterns, like back and forth. Avoid those. You always want to have, like, smaller strokes on these guys. And then uh, I'll even go all the way down to here. This will be covered with trees eventually, but right now I'm going to get the base coat on there and focus more on like composition. So I'll get rid of those little trees over there as well. Uh, now I'll add more blue to it. And you're not mixing like puddles of paint. You can mix the paint right on the canvas. And with this, I'm going to come in here, highlights here, so I'll go a highlight color. And the paint is pretty fluid. In other words, you don't want to go like pure paint or dried paint. That'd be the worst case scenario. Uh, then it'll get a little bit darker as it comes down, but not like too crazy dark. So now I'm like scumbling. I'm going kind of fast. However, uh, the strokes are small though. So I'm going like direction like this, sideways, mixing them up a little bit. I'll also follow the contours of the hill. So if your hill is going up an angle, all the brush strokes should be doing the same thing. So coming up at a little bit of an angle, coming down here a little bit. And I'll add more yellow here in a second. So right now you can see all the brush strokes and right here I have a, like a dirty edge. So I'll add a little bit of water to it so I can clean this up. See this little mess up here? Make the hill a little bit larger up here so I can like cover that so it looks like a nice clean edge. <clears throat> and it's gray, a little bit of blue. I'll do some yellow here in a second. Small strokes, and you also want to change color pretty often. Now, most of this hill is going to be covered. Um, I know that, so I'm not going to spend tons of time on it. But in between the trees, when you see the mountains, you want to be able to see, like, hey, there's a real mountain behind those trees. So even though it's going to be covered, you do want to go ahead and, like, try to get a lot of detail in there. There's, like, pure blue almost. And come down here on the bottom. Now, all this will be covered with, like, trees in the foreground. Uh, but once again, I'm still going in, even though it's going to be covered. You know, it's like, don't think of it like, well, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be covered. Try to do a good job on it. So here, I'm going to go a little bit of the white. 
blur that out here again, more of a highlight, clean edge. And you don't want too much paint. So you start off kind of like a thick layer of paint. And then if you look at my brush strokes, they're coming in, they're kind of a variety of uh, techniques and strokes. So you can go fast, but long as you get that pattern down. So it's like, you want it to look like it took you a long time. You want it to look like it took you uh, like this. So here's like actual pace or speed. Little stroke, come down, over a little bit on the edge, back up, take a look at it, and then come down over here. <clears throat> Lots more blue. So I got the blue and the dirty brush. And the further back you go, like I want to get a sense that it's like further away. So to do that, I have it more like the sky color. Then this mountain over here, um, that's further away than this one. So to do that, it's going to be more closer to the uh, sky color. And really, this color here should almost be the same as your sky color, like uh, a little further away. Okay, so right now, um, I'm doing the base coat. And as you can see, get a nice coverage of the bluish gray. And uh, right now, it's just kind of a flat surface. So now it's like a phase one. Uh, so now what I want to do is add more hills on top of the hills. So it's like hill on hill action. It's kind of hot. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is add some little textures to it. So here, if I do that and then blend it out, it's going to look like there's like another hill that comes out there. So it's not just all flat like a wall. So to avoid that wall thing, all you have to do is add more hills on top of the hills. Now it's starting to get a little bit dry. So I'm going to dip the brush in a little bit of water and continue this all the way through. So it's kind of a hard edge here. I'll soften this a little bit by scumbling. Scumble over here. More highlight on this side. So with the highlight, I'm gonna come in and scumble again, feather it out. And you go a little crazy with your brush strokes on the inside. But once again, the outside, you want those pretty clean. You don't want to go like too crazy with that. Uh, you want to have a, like a nice clean edge. Here's like solid blue again. And right now it's too blue, but I'll mix this same blue up over here in the gray area. So instead of changing color all the time, I might pick up some of the paint on the brush, then move down here a little bit. And then all the way up. All right, so now Starting to have like it comes down a little bit and it comes out because I got the highlight. A little more highlight on this side. When you hold the brush, try to hold it back a little bit further. See how the brush is designed? Like fat here, skinny here. It's meant to be held back here. You don't hold it like a pencil, which a lot of people make that mistake. They go like, well, kind of like drawing with paint. Instead of that though, you want to make sure you come in there with a little more of the highlights and shadows and then to get a nice size brush stroke, you hold back further, you can move further with the brush. All right, uh, that's good enough for a base coat for that. Now at the background hill, I'm gonna go even further with it. And I'm gonna um, make that more like the sky color. So to do that, I'll go more white and blue. And I'll set it back so there's less contrast. So the further back you go, you have less contrast, less lights, less darks becomes almost one color. And you do want your hills to be darker than your sky though. So the sky, if the sky's like a valley of like three or something like that, and you want your mountains to be like a valley of like four, for instance. And I'm scumbling this in. Then here, it's, it's coming down, so I'm gonna go this direction. And then this is gonna be covered with a house eventually, because I have another request for a house shell. So I'm gonna do that as well. And scumbling, different directions, yada yada. And normally I wanna start with the furthest away um, mountain. I'm starting to be really careful, but um, if it overlaps like this, you overlap your paint, all you have to do is go back in and then cover it up with your, uh, your mountain that's a little bit closer. All right. So now I have that going. Uh, I'll do more little white, a little more blue, and tap that in as well. 
Now all of a sudden that's going further away in the background. Now I'll go for the clean edge, a little more water to it, make sure I have a clean edge. The paint is not that thick. Now your first coat should be you know, thicker than your last coat. So in general with acrylic paints, you're gonna go thicker first, then lighter and lighter and lighter. And so uh, in the background, once again, most of this is really covered, but you see this value here compared to that value? This is gonna have more contrast in the foreground. So I'll add a little more highlight to it. <clears throat> it's a little bit on the dry side, so I'll dip the brush back in water again and tap that out. Now to add perspective, we don't know what the size of the trees are gonna be like on this thing. Um, so I'm gonna go back in and then show you some trees to add perspective. So when you're doing hills, now you can see this like little lump right here. So it's, you know, a little bit more of a highlight. So it's like a hill and it goes steeper here because it's a little bit more of a darker value. Darker values would insinuate that it's gonna be uh, a little steeper <clears throat> away from the light source. And I'll blend this out a little bit. Tippy tap tap a room. And if you have like a bad brush stroke, and I'll show you a bad one here in a second. So a bad brush stroke is when you have like one singular stroke. So if I do like a hill right here, so if I come down here, a little bit of a hill, oh, one giant brush stroke looks terrible. So all you have to do to make that look better, come in and smooth it out a little bit, go different directions. You don't want a singular brush stroke. And we have an extra contour on that. And then down here on the bottom, we'll do the same thing. Have a little hill right below that one. And same scumbling approach. And see how hard edge this top is? I'm gonna feather that out a little bit, scumble. Okay. So overall for the background of this painting, it's probably almost good enough. For back here, I'll do a little more of a highlight, but not too much though, since it's uh, further away, it's not gonna have as much contrast. I'm gonna avoid the dark areas, only have highlights and the medium tones. Okay. <clears throat> So I have that. Now, that could be almost good enough for that part. Now I'll take a smaller brush. Um, still using a bright brush though. So I'll use a bright brush, go in there with some more of the details. Uh, here we go. Size so about like this, more or less. And then I'll do some trees. Now it's gonna be, they're green trees, however, being this far in the distance, um, they're not gonna look green. They'll be more like a grayish green. So with the, the, the bright brush, I'm gonna tap them in. And with the trees, I'll do like clumps of them, like a little clump over here, clump on the side, and what have you. So with this, I come in here, and then I'll establish like, hey, this is further away, because you can see the size of the trees. Smaller ones over here, a little clump of these. Now the bottoms, you want these to be kind of smooth. So I'm gonna lick your finger a little bit and you kind of like haze it off. So in other words, spit action and haze it out so it doesn't look quite so obvious. <clears throat> and then I'll add some more over here too. I'll add some highlights on there. Bluish gray highlights. Now I do want these kind of blurry so you can barely see them. And here, the bottoms are like too rigid. Once again, spit on your finger a little bit. And you kind of wiggle your finger as you pull it down and it's gonna blur it out. I don't know what that guy is. Okay, so in here I'll do like a little bit larger one because now we're getting closer. I'm using the side of the brush and kind of like a chopping approach. So I'm not like painting it like this. I'm actually just like hitting the brush. And getting all those values in there.
and that little friend over here. So this little cluster of trees. In general, there's gonna be like clusters of trees. They don't like grow too much independently. I can do some smaller ones off in the distance. Less contrast because it's further away. And over here, I can just do like patches of trees, but like super light. And blur it out a little bit on the bottom. And I'll even add less contrast to all go more of the blues and stuff in there too. Once again, most of this will be hidden. You won't be able to see it at all. But it is important to have this. So if you see like a little gap in between the trees, you see a little tree behind the tree, then it's kind of cool. All about the layers, like Shrek or an onion. Okay, so now I have these little trees over there in the background. Same thing over here. I'll do another couple more. And these are going to be more like, not like tree shapes, but like more patterns like where the trees are. And I'll tap it out a little bit. Okay, so far, that's what we have so far. Now I'm going to go with the highlights. Highlights on these, I'm going to go a little bit of the grays, a little bit of the blue white, maybe some green to indicate that it is a tree. So you start too dark and you add some of the lighter values on top. Just kind of scumbling those in there. Damn, these don't look that great on their own, but when you see when it's done with the foreground trees, then these will appear to look really good. The brain's kind of a tricky thing. It's kind of amazing where um, if you see a couple of good ones, up close and you have these mediocre ones in the background like these aren't that great but when you see them with the good ones in front then people will think these are also good it's like painting a tree with like up close we have a lot of leaves on them uh same kind of process i'll go a little bit darker on this one and once again there's gonna be big trees over this area so you probably won't even see this guy blur it out on the bottom Lick my finger, and when I pull it, I'm going to kind of like wiggle my finger back and forth. And it gives you a nice smooth blend. And as far as background mountains, uh, for what I'm doing, uh, that's good. You don't really need to do any more than that. So once again, we have like a background hills contrast in there. Um, and in the reference, you can't even see the background hills which you won't really be able to see these either. But I wanna make sure that they're looking halfway decent, uh, just so if you see a gap in the trees, you can still see that they are, they are trees and they look pretty good. Okay, so once again, the, the whole point of this thing is a bright brush, um, exaggerating the contrast uh, and making it look, uh, following your reference, making it look good. And if your reference is not like, great, find a better reference. And that's background mountains.